if you had to pick one thing that um, I know that's got, that's going to be hard, but if you had to pick one thing that you would say would be responsible for a lot of your success, what do you think it would be? Uh, oh, that, that's really hard. I don't know if I could necessarily just pick one thing. It was, a, I would say one of the biggest things growing up was the support that I had from my parents. Sure. Uh, my dad was my coach back then you know, when I was a teenager and still living at home. And for as much as we butted heads and there, I mean, there's a reason he's not my coach anymore. It's because yeah. we butted heads too much and it wasn't going to work. And we had a difference in philosophies as well. Uh, he helped me to be able to stay, t- stay focused and stay motivated to, to do what I did. And a lot of the motivation came from him pissing me off and, you know, <laughs> and, and being mad at him. So I'm like, no, you know what? I'm going to prove you wrong. Yeah. And I've been, I, I strive on being able to prove people wrong because people have been saying that I wasn't going to be able to do something my entire career. But, you know, outside of that, I had a lot of confidence in myself when I was younger, at least out on the range because that was the, the one place that I knew that I could go and I could get out of it everything that I put into it. Yeah. So I knew how much effort I was putting into it. And I, yeah. I know that I was back then I, I could definitely be a cocky kid and, and I lost a lot of friends because of it, but I learned also because of some really good friends, what humility was true. Sure. True understood it. And you have to compartmentalize these things. You know, you, I, str- I really try every day to be to, uh, as humble as I possibly can because I know now that anybody can be beaten on any given day. It can happen to the best of people. It doesn't matter how good you are, somebody's going to have a better day than you at some point. And, but at the same time, inside my own mind, I'm telling myself, I am the best in the world. And we have to. It's like the Muhammad Ali quote when, when he said, I told myself I was the best before I ever knew that I was. You, know, you're, you're, you have to say it to yourself. You have to speak it into existence. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to believe it. So, you know, yeah, it could, be, it could come across as being cocky. But at the same time, it's confidence. You have to think that way. Every elite athlete goes into a competition expecting to win. It's not that we're just going there hoping to win. We may say that. No, we're, if we weren't going there to win, we wouldn't even go. Totally. Yeah. I get it. I get it. I, I get it. I, I get that intensity and I understand it. You know, um, yeah, you have to visualize that win. Uh, and that's the whole reason you're doing it. Right. And, and, and such essentially. Um, yeah. Wow. That's intense. That's so intense. Um, it, it can be. And what I always like to say is I love to win, but I hate to lose. So I that get is that. A very big oh. motivating factor. <laughs> I get that, man. Um, you know, they say in uh, poker, um, that, uh, you, you know, you don't really remember your wins, but you remember every bad beat you've ever had, mm-hmm. you know, and that's the truth. I think in light you do, you just remember those, you know, like I'm, I, I work in the restaurant industry. So I'm a chef, I, you know, had my own places and that sort of thing. And you remember the dish that didn't go right. You know, it's like, it's so crazy that that's what you'll focus on when everything else goes right. But that's the one thing you care about. But that's also, to me, the difference between good chefs and bad chefs. The good chefs care about that thing, and that's why they have less of them, mm-hmm. less mistakes, less failure, less, you know, because they care. They put everything into it. Like you said, they visualize. They're a little cocky. My shit's delicious. You're going to love it before <laughs> I even hand it to you. You know, I'm already like, you know, verbally, you know, influencing you as well with it as the dishes come, you know, sort of thing. So I get it, man. I get the intent, obviously not the same level or anything like that, but, uh, it's always, um, cool to me to see how things relate, uh, as well. Uh, but wow, that's so intense. I get it, man. At that level, you know, at, at such a high level, it, it's got to be insane. Who, who do you think are your, every sport has this, I'm sure every athlete has their own personal sort of like arch nemesis, do you have any people out there that you're just like, oh, man, I got to beat this guy? You know, because I know that's a part of sport, too. You know, it's not just yourself. You're also in a friendly way, but also very competitive, too, right? That you just want to beat other people, beat this person. Are there, are there anybody out there or some people out there that are just you're always looking to beat? You know, for the most part, I, I consider 
pretty much everybody that that competes to be friends of mine. But sure, but you still I, want to beat them. I would be remiss in right. saying that I didn't have particular people where I'm like, you know, that, that have come out of nowhere. Maybe they beat me when I felt like I should have won or something like that. It yeah, just totally. Made me mad, and yeah. I'm like, I'm never gonna let him beat me again. And it's like I, I am focused on making sure that obviously I'm focused on making sure that I do what I need to do. But if we get into the final, which is the top six after qualification, and we're we're going, we all start back at zero. And I'm like, that's my man right there. I'm beating him. <laughs> like I don't care if I finish fifth. I'm beating him. Yeah. So it's like, no. I mean, obviously, I care if I finish fifth. I want to finish first every time. But, of course. You know, it, there's always that that driving factor just kind of motivates you that little bit extra. It's not like we need a whole lot of extra motivation, but if I can find it, you better believe I'm going to take it. I, believe, I mean, I get it. You know, listen to everyone listening. This is the sound of a winner, guys. This is the attitude you have to have. You know, it's honestly, it's inspiring. It's good uh, because, like you said earlier, sometimes people will take that as like cocky or this, that, but it's not. It's just visualizing success and visualizing, you know, what, what you're setting out to do, whatever that may be, and accomplishing it. If you can't see yourself doing it, how are you actually going to do it? Exactly. Right. It, it doesn't make any sense. Um, so, no, I totally get that. That's awesome. Yeah, I would be all about competitive. I'm glad I'm not into those. I would be, you know, I, I would be all about that <laughs> stuff. I to say that because I have found like I've worked with quite a few different chefs over the years. They are exactly the same mindset as we are. <laughs> I mean, it is so eerily similar. The mindsets that we have. It's so much fun, though, because, I mean, we'll get in there like they know what I do. Like you were out shooting with me. But they're like, no, I'm going to beat you, dude. I can, yeah. I, like, I'm, I'm going to do this because they're just so darn competitive. But yes. I love it. That's what makes yes. it so much fun when you have somebody that has the confidence of themselves to say, you know what, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going exactly. to do this, work hard. I may not be very good at it, but I'm going to try it really, really hard. Absolutely. Yeah. You're, they're going to give the best version of themselves towards it. Yeah, absolutely. That's our attitude. It, you know, it comes from just working in our industry that's very cutthroat, high pressure, at least in the t types of restaurants that I've worked um, myself or even owned, you know, it's, it's um, yeah, it's high pressure. It's high intense. You know, you're, you're dealing with a lot of stuff. It's, it's competitive is part of it. You want to do good. You want to be the best. In fact, that's what, if it's not for the best, you don't even want to do it. It doesn't seem worth your time almost. You know what I mean? Um, it used to be a thing in uh, restaurants where like if a celebrity came in, people be like, oh, I don't want to make that dish. I don't want to cook that. I don't want, they don't want the pressure of if it not good, that person doesn't like it, blah, blah. It's this chain effect. Uh, but my thing was like, oh, that's what I want. I want that. I want the pressure. I want the, give me that. Give me the big thing. Give me the thing everyone's worried about. Um, because yeah, that's the most exciting because that's where the biggest reward is to me, right? I just want the biggest reward. and I'm willing to take the risk of the biggest fail to get it. Do you think you have to have that attitude? Like you have to be willing to fail big to win big. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you have to put everything on the line, everything. Yeah. And it, it, we, that's what practice is for though. I and mean, that's, that's the thing is that you're not going to, to expect to make a dish the very first time. Exactly. That's one in the entire world. I mean, you have to practice yeah. at it. Yeah. And that's what I've been, I've been practicing my sport and trying to perfect every little thing for the last 20 years. And I mean, I'm, I'm still not perfect, but I'm getting closer and closer. I feel like each year because of the amount of time and effort and focus that I'm putting into it. Yep. So it's like, yeah. If I, yeah, I know that if I go in timid, I'm never going to win anything. I have yeah. to do everything I have. And if I fail, I fail, but I failed doing everything I could to make sure that I was putting forth my best effort. 